Oh! You might have already seen a video I made comparing every single Galaxy S smartphone, from the simple plastic beginnings all the way to aluminium and Gorilla Glass. Well, today we're answering an even bigger question. Are these newer flagship smartphones at all actually stronger than the older ones? I also wanted to thank Invisible Shield for sponsoring this video. So we're going to start things off with a scratch test. What I've got here is Moe's Hardness Kit, which presents you with a whole bunch of picks made from materials of different hardness. The idea is that if two materials interact, the one that is harder will scratch the one that is less hard. So we're going to go up the scale until each phone starts to scratch, so we can gauge the hardness of each device. So, starting off with hardness level 2, a material called gypsum, and this is pretty uneventful, every single smartphone is able to completely resist this. On to level 3, a material called calcite, and this is where we start to see some damage. On the Galaxy S1, for example, this thing is hard enough to cause light surface scratches. And this trend continues for all the plastic phones here, the S1 all the way to the Galaxy S5. After this though, on the S6 and beyond, absolutely nothing at all, it just glides across. For a point of reference, level 3 is also hard enough to scratch the infamous Nokia 3310. Now, we're going to get a little more serious about this. I've designed a durability scale, and each phone is going to get a durability rating that's going to carry on through all the tests we do in this video, and at the end, we'll compare the final scores to see if phones are actually getting weaker. Level 4 is a material called fluorite, which is now hard enough to gouge the back of plastic-based phones, and it doesn't at all matter what the texture of the device is. If it's plastic-based, then 4 is going to tear right through it. And so, you'll now see a durability score below each phone. That number is going to keep going up until we reach a hardness level that deeply damages it, and then that's how many points each phone is going to get. So, because the S1 to the S5 are all deeply damaged by level 4, they're going to get 4 durability points, but no more than that. It'll all make sense as we go along. Also, level 4 does leave a little bit of a mark on some of the glass devices, but nothing that can't be rubbed off. Number 5 is the unusually named Appetite, which manages to, as you probably guessed, soar right through all the plastic phones. With ease, by the way, I'm exerting very little effort, but still absolutely nothing on the glass phones. So, on to level 6, Orthoclase, and I don't even need to tell you that the plastics definitely didn't enjoy this material, but what's also interesting is that the glass ones are now starting to show signs of damage. It is very light damage though, and whilst it does appear on the S6, S7 and the S8, I could not actually scratch the S9 with this, or the S10s. It would leave marks, but I could just rub them straight off. Level 7 is a material you might be more familiar with. This is quartz, and whilst it is hard enough to quite easily scratch even the glass devices, it's not forming the deepest possible gouges. There's still some resistance from the material, and so I'd still say the glass devices survived level 7, the same way plastic survived level 3. Anyways, level 8, Topaz completely changes this. It doesn't seem to matter what the device material is, whether it's plastic, whether it's glass, it doesn't matter which generation of glass it is, whether it's Gorilla Glass 3 or Gorilla Glass 6, this thing just tears right through them. With minimal effort, it forms deep gouges. So really just for a bit of fun at this point, we're gonna have a little play with level 9. And this is a good opportunity to see a bit of a close-up of how the scratching looks in action. Anyways, before we start properly smashing stuff, it'd be interesting to see if scratch resistance on the front glass has actually improved at all. And you might have noticed that we've actually got two Galaxy S10s here. Well, the second one's actually going to be fitted with an invisible shield glass fusion protector. And I think you'd be quite surprised at the extent they've gone to make sure people don't mess the installation up. So you give the screen a clean, give it a dry, and then you put it into this installation bracket. You also get a dust removal sticker to use at this stage, and then once you've got the screen protector, you just pull off the first layer and lower it down and it fits perfectly in place every time because of the holder. You swipe a finger down to get rid of air bubbles and then use the included tool to finish off the job, and you're good. So, screen and scratching. Level 2 gypsum does absolutely nothing to all of them. The same is true for level 3. 3 won't scratch glass, but seeing as the glass fusion guard on this S10 does have impact resistant layers on top, those will be scratched, lightly, but that's already a step above the heavy gouges that the inbuilt screen protector would have. Level 4 still leaves no permanent damage, but it is where you start to see marks left on the screen that can be wiped off. Level 5 is equally uneventful, but level 6 is where you start to see light scratches on every single device. From Corning Gorilla Glass 1 on the Galaxy S1 to Corning Gorilla Glass 6 on the Galaxy S10, every single one suffers. Level 7 causes slightly deeper cuts with slightly more ease, but it's still not enough to completely plough through this glass. Very much permanent damage though. 
Switching that up to level 8 though, this starts to feel a bit like art class, like you're drawing on a piece of paper. Scratches occur very easily and are very noticeable. So, because each smartphone here has managed to somewhat resist until hardness level 8, I've given them all 8 points for this screen scratch resistance test. 9 is just for fun really, no phone is actually resisting this at all. Okay, now time to grab a hammer and start destroying stuff, but as I'm doing this, as I'm taking the phones out, I did notice something a little unexpected. Whilst all the plastic phones were fine, some of the glass devices had shattered. The backs had broken because they'd been scratched up, and then pressure was placed on them when I was testing the screens. So on each of these devices, I'm going to deduct a few points for this, depending on how severe the damage is. What made this even more interesting is that whilst the S6, S7, and S8 had cracked because of this, the S9 and S10s were completely fine. And turns out, this is because the S9 was when Samsung started using thicker glass. Anyways, finally outside, and I've got a bit of a setup going on. On the table right now are the first six phones to be smashed. I couldn't fit all of them on the table at once. What I'm going to do now is, starting with the S1 and moving upwards, perform all four remaining tests and then give the phone a rating out of 10 based on how well it has resisted each challenge. The Ben test did absolutely nothing to the S1, I couldn't even get a creak out of the phone. We're then doing a hammer test, which is a light hit followed by a much heavier hit, and this again leaves nothing but a tiny scratch. Something that was requested from the last time I did a durability test was the side hit, and even this causes no structural damage at all. And so finally, the reverse hammer hit, which, even though this is the most painful test, only left a mark that is barely visible and the phone is completely usable. So after that, frankly, insane results, it was pretty funny to see that the S2, in an effort to make the phone much slimmer, has nowhere near the level of resistance that the S1 did. After bending alone, the phone is pretty much rendered useless, the only saving grace being that the back panel is still unharmed. Onto the hammer test, where the light hammer doesn't really do any more damage than has already been done, but the heavy one leaves a real mark. The side resisted pretty well, and even though the reverse hammer shot adds a decent amount of extra damage, remember the phone was already pretty torn up by the first hammer test. The Galaxy S3 suffers from some slightly concerning creaking, but no noticeable damage when bent. The hammer test doesn't leave any particular feature unusable, and the display doesn't look too damaged apart from some minor surface scratches. And the side resistance in particular on this phone is pretty great. The reverse hammer shot though, we all knew this was going to be painful, pretty much renders the device useless. It didn't actually crack the screen, it just added a permanent pink line through it, and within two minutes the S3 was stuck on permanent boot loop. Now, the Galaxy S4 did not get off to a good start. The Ben test alone showed definite flexing, worrying cracking, and a good part of the screen was just completely gone after it. Aside from that, although, you know, that is bad, it's good to see that the phone didn't take too much additional damage with the other tests I did. And when it came to the reverse hammer test, although the cracking becomes much more apparent, the screen still partially worked. The Galaxy S5 looked completely fine when I was doing the Ben test and when I was doing the hammer test, but this must have been causing some sort of internal damage, because with one knock on the side, even though the trim itself was unharmed, it looks like the phone more or less broke. And this was quite succinctly wrapped up with the reverse hammer hit. Most remnants of the screen that were still working before were no longer working afterwards. I was really curious to test the Galaxy S6, being not just the first all-glass smartphone here, but also one of the ones that was quite significantly beaten up from a bit of scratching and a bit of pressure. It actually held up reasonably well in the Ben test, I just noted one slight cracking sound which was a little worrying, but apart from that, no noticeable damage. However, every subsequent test was just... it just wasn't good. <laughs> Even a light tap with the hammer test, the first one, caused a massive crack which spread throughout the whole front of the phone. You'll see the metal side trim put up some resistance, but because the glass on either side of it is already cracked and pretty fragile as it is, hitting the side damages the front and back. It's then not entirely surprising that the reverse hammer hit completely totals this phone. It's game over for the S6. So, quick recap of what we've smashed so far. The Galaxy S1 has held up remarkably, with the only noticeable damage being the scratches from the first test. The S2 is a complete train wreck from the front, but the back doesn't look too bad at all. The S3 was a noticeable improvement over that though. Whilst it's completely unusable in this state, the visible damage is much less. The S4 kind of made me laugh. When Samsung launched this phone, they went on and on about how this was going to be your life companion, and almost like it's calling from the grave, that is the only thing you can see left on the screen. The S5 is in pretty good nick physically, but clearly something's gone wrong on the inside because there is no output at all to the display. 
But when you see what's happened to the S6, it makes all the other phones that came before it look like absolute tanks. This phone is super fragile with only 30 points of resistance. Alrighty, time to get rid of those phones and replace them with their more expensive, more recent counterparts with a special guest appearance from the Nokia 3310 because this is literally the device that mobile phone durability is compared to. So I felt like if we're doing a test on this scale anyway, we can't not include it. The Galaxy S7, and when bending this phone, I definitely heard a little bit of cracking, which is never a good sign. It did well on the hammer test, nothing more than a couple of scratches, and I was pretty happy with resistance from the sides, but the reverse hammer test really took it out of this one. I was kind of shocked when I picked it up and the screen was fully functional after this big of a crack on top of it. Also, the back of the phone wasn't exactly thanking me at this stage. You might remember when the Galaxy S8 came out, there was definitely a worry about durability. This was the first time when even the standard variant of a phone had not just a curved back, but also a curved front. It turns out people were right to worry. Whether it's a bend, whether it's a slight hit with a hammer, this is a vulnerable device to breaking. Every single test left a mark on this thing. The final test left another significant crater, and the screen was unresponsive, but the positive news is that it was still pretty well and pretty evenly lit up. But you want to see destruction? Look at the back of this phone. In fact, it was so bad that there were small pieces of glass all over this table, so I gave it a good wipe before bringing in the S9, which I was really hopeful for. Turns out, the thicker glass used here also helps when it comes to bending. This phone was mega durable, I couldn't hear anything, 10 out of 10. I gave it a whack with a hammer as well, very, very little damage, and hitting it from the side didn't cause much to the side trim, but because the glass was already weak on the back, there was a crack. And I was completely flawed after I did this reverse hammer hit, there wasn't a single bit of extra damage on the screen, although I did find some on the back, we'll have a look at this later. Now, I was kind of hoping that the S10 would be even more durable than the S9, this would show that Samsung is on the right track, that they're constantly improving, and that they were aware of their past mistakes, and so far so good when it comes to bending. The first hammer test as well does absolutely nothing, but the second one does leave a bit of warping on the screen. It's not a massive issue, it's like a really subtle dent in the display, which you can only really see when you're panning the phone around. It's child's play compared to some of the injuries we've seen today. The side hit too, pretty good, although just like with the S9, the curved glass on the back does start to crack a little bit. Turns out the Galaxy S10 is a properly durable phone, even that reverse hammer hit, almost nothing on the front of the phone, a little bit more cracking on the back, but we'll get to that in a second. Just before we start smashing the infamous Nokia phone, we're gonna have a go with the S10 with the glass fusion guard installed. Just like with the regular S10, bend test, not a problem at all. The hammer test does leave a few marks, and funnily enough, the exact same warping that we saw on the S10 before. But you'll see in a second why this isn't actually an issue. I then gave it two hits from the side because of the supposed chip protection here, and then just to make sure it's doing its job, three reverse hammer hits from the front. And at this point, it does kind of look like the phone is a little bashed up, but this glass fusion guard that we've got on right now, it's actually designed with impact in mind. And so when you take it off, it becomes pretty clear that the screen underneath is absolutely fine. Oh yeah, and as well as the impact protection, the glass fusion is also smudge resistant. Alrighty, the Nokia 3310, the supposed titan of the mobile phone market. Clearly bending it wasn't an option, that became very clear. But I was kind of surprised to see that the first hammer hit alone was enough to destroy the screen. Hitting the phone from the side did leave a mark, but no actual structural damage. Anyways, by the time it got to the reverse hammer hit, one thing became very clear. The Nokia 3310 has a vulnerability in its display, but when you're not hitting that, just when it comes to the general body of the phone, this thing is every bit as indestructible as people say. Matter of fact, it completely lived up to its name. I was hitting this phone so hard, the table underneath was starting to break. Um, before I knew it, this dent turned into a crater, and then eventually, I thought I'd broken it for a second, but then I realized literally the removable back could come off and that you could just snap it back into place. Game over, Nokia 3310 one, Mr. Who's the Boss, zero. So to recap that round, the Galaxy S7 was very average in terms of durability. The S8 got completely mauled from both the front and the back, but the S9 was where we started to see a massive shift from Samsung. 
thicker glass made more of a difference than any level of Gorilla Glass did in terms of the durability. And then it was nice to see that this carries forward through to the S10 as well. So to answer the question, have smartphones gotten weaker? I would say the answer is yes and no. The Nokia 3310 is from a time when all smartphones were these really durable bricks. And these kind of design cues and these materials also appeared in early smartphones like the Galaxy S1. And so those phones also were incredibly durable. But then, as you can see from durability here, the focus started to become design, it started to become thinness and form factor, and it's only recently in the last few years when technology has gotten good enough that we're actually able to have both slim devices that are incredibly durable. And so the trend is actually upwards and positive, and I can't wait for it. If you enjoyed this video, then please do consider subscribing to the Mr. Who's the Boss channel. I'd really appreciate it. And I'm also going to drop links to the glass fusion cards in the description below, so do check that out. My name is Aaron, this is Mr. Who's the Boss. And I'll catch you in the next one.